Police Department, search warrant. 1125, Police Department, search warrant. Police Department, search warrant! 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 Police and uh, he was actually nice enough to send me a couple of links. So the article I have for you looking at right now, this is not one of the links he sent, but this is something that I found when I was looking into it. And I wanted to uh, kind of address this and then we're going to go into what really happened. So the article that I found is while serving a warrant on the wrong person, police execute a teen as he's sleeping on the couch. This is the, uh, the most typical kind of police misinformation that you're going to find out on the interwebs. Uh, so what you have here is this is a picture that looks very much like a teen who is just peacefully sleeping on his couch. And then you have some police officers standing over him, shooting at him. Um, so what this person is trying to say is that officers just kicked open this, this guy's door and it was the wrong door and they shot him for no reason. If you go into the article, it's trying to say that, uh, this kid, while he did shoot 18 rounds, he was simply trying to defend himself. And by saying that they're executing a warrant on the wrong person, they're trying to say that the police were stupid or in the words of uh, a certain former president that they acted stupidly. Now the, uh, well, I'm just going to go ahead and let the department speak for themselves because the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department, I think that's what they're called. They have some of the best press briefings I have ever seen. And I would go so far as to say this is, this should be used as a model for all police agencies going forward when it comes to police involved shootings. Um, here's how they introduce their shootings. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm assistant sheriff, Andrew Walsh. And I'm here to brief you today about the additional details as we know them today from the officer-involved shooting that occurred on Monday, January 10th, 2022. This was officer-involved shooting number two for 2022, fatal officer-involved shooting number two for 2022. And this time last year, we had zero officer-involved shootings. So the next thing that happened in the briefing is they listed all of the officers who were involved. They listed how long they've been with the department, their ages, which I don't know why every time a police officer is named in an article, they have to say his age. Um, like, hey, Officer Ben, 42 years old. I, I don't know why that matters, but something the media always wants to see. So they listed their names, their ages, what weapon they fired, and how many rounds they actually fired. And then shortly after that is when he got into a brief narrative about why they were there at an apartment located in the 3000 block of South Nellis Boulevard. The search warrant was part of an investigation follow-up related to a homicide that occurred in our jurisdiction in November of 2021. At approximately 5 a.m., members of our special weapons and tactics team approached the apartment and announced their presence by yelling out police department search warrant multiple times. All right, so this is where the narrative from the police department and the narrative from these people who are telling these stories that are spreading misinformation, this is where it begins to kind of divide because what people on the internet are going to try to make you believe is that this, um, I think it was 19 year old guy was just laying on his couch at home asleep, minding his own business. And the police just opened the door and he had no idea who they were. So he began shooting at them. So when right there, the chief said, you know, they knocked and announced multiple times. Well, here's what that sounded like. Police department, search warrant, 1125. Police department, search warrant. Police department, search warrant! 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 Police department, search is I don't want this video to get age restricted. Every time you show police involved shooting on, on YouTube, it gets age restricted. And then there's a lot of people who complain to me that they were unable to watch the video that I shared. So instead of showing the actual shooting, what I'm going to do is I'm going to link this briefing in the, um, information section or the description, the description of this video will contain a link to this whole briefing that contains the entire um, shooting from multiple angles. But what I'm going to do instead of showing the shooting myself and instead of 
describing it to you or draw pictures, I'm going to let the, um, the assistant chief himself do that for you. So this is the next part of the briefing. As the SWAT officers made entry, they were immediately met with gunfire from a male who was later identified as Isaiah Tyree Williams, who was laying on a couch next to the front door. SWAT officer Kerry Kubler was the first to enter the apartment and was shot multiple times by Williams. Officer Kubler fired one round before falling to the ground. SWAT Sergeant Backman and SWAT officers Clements, Rothenberg, and Gonzalez exchanged gunfire with Williams until he was struck and stopped firing his weapon at officers. All right, now the next part of this that some people claim to be controversial is the fact that the person that they were looking for was not home. So the person that opened fire on the officers was not the person that had that they were looking for out of this homicide investigation. Um, this is the part where he describes that. And during this investigation, detectives determined that Williams was not the suspect in the homicide from November of 2021, and that suspect was not in the apartment during the officer-involved shooting. All right, so they, they talked about that briefly, and then the next thing he's going to do is give you a little bit more details about what actually happened. So they did the, the breach, and then he talked about the shooting. Now he's going to give you a little bit of information, some still shots of what that looked like to the officers. And you can see in this still photo, this was taken uh, from Officer Kubla's camera. This is after he was shot, uh, fell to the floor, and you can see the suspect laying on the couch, the muzzle flash from his weapon, and then you can see the SWAT officers on the entry team being fired upon by the suspect as he's on the couch. The next photo, this is Officer Kubla's vest. One of the rounds that he was struck with uh, struck the left side of his vest, uh, which would have been covering his part of his torso, and then there's the bullet actually lodged inside the vest. This is Officer Kubla's holster, or thigh rig, and you can see the damage from the bullet is circled there, uh, but you can see where the crack in the holster over by where the uh, barrel of his firearm would be, his handgun would be. And then the next photograph, this is Officer Kubla's uh, rifle, the muzzle of his rifle, which was also struck by gunfire. This is the shield that Officer Rothenberg had on the outside window of the apartment, and you can see where the shield was struck by gunfire. So when the suspect was laying on the couch, he not only had the opportunity to fire at the officers on the entry team, but he also fired rounds through the window at the officers that were on the outside. Alrighty, so now you've had all of the information, basically all the information that was in the press briefing. Um, before I go ahead and address this, the person's uh, tweets, and the article that were that I mentioned before, like this person. Um, let's read this again. If I haven't read this yet, I'm sorry. Uh, watch as cowboy cops in Las Vegas, Nevada, survey warrant on the wrong person, kill him as he tries to figure out if he's the victim of a home invasion. So I want to show you the entry again, and then I'm going to provide you with my thoughts. Police department search warrant. 1125, Alrighty, so clearly, as you can see, the officers were serving a search warrant. They gave the people inside the residence multiple opportunities to figure out who it was that was knocking on the door. Um, now, when she says that they served a warrant on the wrong person and then entered and killed him. She's not accurate. Um, well, she's just, <laughs> she's what she's showing is that she doesn't know what she's talking about because the officers were not serving an arrest warrant for a person. I don't know if the guy they were looking for even had a warrant for his arrest. What they were doing was they were serving a search warrant for a suspect. Now a search warrant is good for an entire residence or whatever the area that's named that they're trying to search for. The reason that you would file a search warrant rather than a west arrest warrant is because there might be multiple people in that house that are up to no good. And once you enter, if you find um, kind of information or evidence that there's more wrongdoing at play, then you can actually have the ability to go ahead and charge those crimes as well. Not only that, but they were looking for a homicide suspect and if they filed an arrest warrant for that person with that address, had they entered the home, 
and there were some guns and things in the home, they would have to go ahead and turn around and file for an, a, a search warrant so that they could go back and collect evidence to see if any of those weapons were used in the homicide, as well as any other evidence that might be in there. So what they were doing was they were executing a search warrant, which allows them to search that revenant, residence for any evidence that would help lead to the solving of the homicide in question. So they did not file or they did not try to execute a warrant on the wrong person. They were executing a warrant on the address and they didn't just go inside and kill somebody. The person that was inside, which you can see the video, if you watch the briefing, it'll be linked in the description below. Um, as soon as they entered the apartment, he began firing on them. The person inside the apartment fired 18 rounds, striking two officers. One of the officers was struck three times. The other officer was struck one time. Um, so to me, it's clear what really happened. And I, I also, I want to address kind of the way they did the whole knock and announce. You know, you're looking for a homicide suspect, really. Um, you're, you're entering an apartment that you believe a homicide suspect is inside. You don't want to give that person a lot of time to make a plan for how they're going to react to the officers once they come in. You want to uh, really catch them off guard and surprise, hope that they don't have time to think about what they're doing. And then when you you throw your flashbangs and you run inside, hopefully they're so dazed and confused that you can go ahead and grab onto them and prevent any serious injuries from happening. Um, not only are they trying to prevent injuries to the officers, but they're also trying to prevent an injury to anybody that might be in the house. Um, by giving people more time to possibly set up some kind of defense, it also makes it more likely that there's going to be a use of force in that situation where if you run into a house and catch everybody off guard, um, you know, you're going to get them before they can get to their weapons, what have you. And it's just safer for everybody, including the people inside the home. So that is the reason that they made those kind of announcements and that kind of entry. So I hope the way I presented everything to you makes sense. I hope you've learned something from this. Um, I don't know. Let me know in the comments below if you think the officers did the right thing in the way that they serve this warrant. I'll talk to you guys soon.